Walking stick production starts in the coppice. In this case, it's chestnut being harvested. It will regenerate within three years. Some cutters prefer a chainsaw, whereas some cutters prefer more traditional methods using a handbill. The raw material is trimmed and roughly graded for size and quality for the many various products produced. The falling byproduct, the frith, is left on the ground. This is wildlife cover, etc. This will have rotted away when the cutters return in three years' time. When the raw material reaches the factory, they are stacked up ready for peeling into the coppers, which are incidentally made of copper, so not to stain the sticks. They're loaded into boiling water. The cycle of this is about half an hour. So I said, the sticks takes about half an hour to boil and is fired up by waste wood. This is a machine used to help remove the bark from the stick. When the sticks are boiled for half an hour, they are then pushed through this machine which consists of four moped tyres bolted together by a very clever engineer which was in fact the XMD of the company. The idea is to push the sticks through the machine as indicated here. These people tend to do this work on piecework at the end of a normal working day hence the reason why you see that they're working rather quickly. Sticks are then left outside for drying. They're left out there for about two to three days depending on the atmospheric condition. The next uh, task is to do a grading exercise. They have to be cut to length for quality and also diameter. As you can imagine there are many many different types of sticks required hence the reason why you had to have so many little pigeonholes of various sticks. Some sticks don't make anything apart firewood. There's quite an instant decision to be made when doing this process. Now here we have an operator creating the shape of a knob on the end of a blackthorn stick. The guard on the saw rather high and considered rather dangerous by the factory inspector but as we said if it's brought down to a certain level the man can't work so he has to be very very careful the knob has got to be made so that it fits the hand there's no point having it the size of a dustbin lid because it won't fit the hand.
This is the bending process. The modern day method is to use mechanically operated assistance on the bending. Heat it again by the same method, steam, to the required temperature. The stick is bent on the machine with a steel which is flexible on the back. It's then tied off with a piece of string allowing to then for the next heating process to harden it. Obviously that was a failure. A little piece of fabric is inserted in behind the stick again to stop the, um, the string biting into the chestnut and creating it to be damaged. Again wearing gloves to stop his hands getting burnt and also stopping his hands getting tarnished by the acid from the sticks. The next process is to remove all the nasty knots on the outer diameter of the stick. This is done by a very sharp rotary cutter and if you press the stick against this rotary cutter it then removes the knots. It's best to keep your fingers well out of the way of this. He's putting a little reduction on the end of the stick. This helps to fit the ferrule at a slightly later date. Having removed the knots, we then put it through a sanding machine. This is a clever little device uh, manufactured by a German company whereby the small rubber tired wheel rotates creating it to go through the stick on a rotary motion. It is also sprung loaded to take up the difference in the diameters of the stick. The sander is rotating to remove the excess amount of um, material on the outer stick. The pedal, which you can't see, reduces